What's up guys, it's The Real Deal, welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to be taking on Phantom Shogun Stage 25, full auto, 100% win rate, and this is the team comp we're running with. We got Mithrala, two Cold Hearts, Paragon, and Nullhorn. So if we look at the setup, the most important thing is the speed tune. So Mithrala, 284. Um, then we got Cold Heart number one at 251, Cold Heart number two at 249, Nullhorn at 184, and then Paragon at 176. And uh, we will look at the builds and masteries, and you've got to be very, very careful with the masteries because uh, I made a huge mistake on Mithrala and I was getting failed runs, so we will look at that later. Um, but yeah, the setup is also really important as well. So we want Mithrala to open up with her A1, and then she's always going to prioritize that cleanse on her A3. Cold Heart, uh, Cold Heart always popping off with that big damage with the Heartseeker, and then Nullhorn lock everything out. He's only doing his RAM, and then Paragon um, is going to use damage control on the A2, and he's on a two-turn cooldown, and he will always place that unkillable buff for two turns on Nullhorn, and he's going to be our tank for this fight. So that's really, really important. And uh, let's do a run. So the boss is going to always focus Nullhorn because he has the most crit damage on the team. The crit damage is very, very important for this. So you can see he's a... Uh, and he needs to have enough HP and enough defense to make sure he takes that first hit. So you can see Paragon's already placed that unkillable buff on him. And because he's just a little bit slower than Nullhorn, he's always going to just... There's, there's like a little bit of a gap where um, he doesn't have unkillable buff on him. And then Paragon's going to step in and put that back on him. And here it is. So there's the gap. And then unkillable buff is back on him. And you can see the boss is going to strip everyone and then place Enfeeble and drop defense across the board. And then Mithrala is going to cleanse it. So basically... It's a very, very complicated fight, and we've just made it very, very simple. It is literally tank, unkillable, um, cleanse, and then just damage from the cold hearts. Um, you don't have to use Mithrala. It can be any three-turn cleanser. The reason I like to use Mithrala, though, is she's a legendary. She can use Smite as well, which is going to help speed up the run, do some more damage. Plus, you, know, you can use her in um, Arena, Doom Tower Waves, uh, Hydra. She is just an insane champion, so it's nice that you can sort of bring her in. And 284 is a decent amount of speed, so she's still usable in all that content. So the boss is down 1 minute 30, very, very fast, very consistent as well. It's usually around that, that speed. So it's, it's a very, very solid team. And I guess the other thing is the awakenings as well. So you don't have to go as overboard as I have. Like, no one doesn't need to be six-starred. Three stars and above. Paragon, we managed to get away with two. Um, Mithrala, you, again, probably up to three stars. However, um, I did buy her up to five stars just because I wanted to have that protected smite. And she's good for Amos as well, actually. So I was using her for Amos with the protected smite. So, yeah, it is good. It is good to have. So let's check out the builds and masteries. So Mithrala, triple perception set. I love perception on her. It just means that we get an insane amount of resistance because of her passive. So she's actually really got about 900, 900, 800 resistance. So that's pretty tanky. You know, if I wanted to, I could bump that out a little bit more as well. Uh, for the gloves, we've got defense. We've got defense on the chest as well. To be honest, it should actually be an accuracy piece, uh, but it's good enough. It could be HP as well. Uh, speed on the boots then we've got okay this is a terrible ring i say this every video it's because i think it's the only reaction piece that i've got for dark elves Ye oh maybe i could swap it out for that but you know it was i've had that for a long time and it's just to help with arena really um hp on the amulet with resistance and accuracy sub rolls um accuracy on the banner 
and let's look at the total stats. So we've got 55k um, HP, 5k defense, very nice, very tanky, 284 speed, and then, you know, I guess it's just 325 resistance and 547 accuracy. Nothing else really matters on our, um, but again, like I said, we could probably bump up that accuracy just a little bit. We change that for a different chess piece. Definitely want to take Smite. Smite is so good on Mithrala. And now the Masteries. So I was taking uh, Rapid Response and Arcane Sillitry. It's, they are, it's really, really good on Mithrala to sort of split because she throws out lots of debuffs. She throws out lots of buffs. However, it does mess with Speed Tune. So we had to take it off. Decided to go into the Defense Tree instead. Um, take Retribution and Deterrence as well. So we can start popping off with counter attacks. You know, she does throw out poisons. There's a good chance you can land smites as well. So very, very good. Um, Blast proof as well is awesome on Mithrala. Helps her become a bit more tanky. Uh, and then we just sort of got a very classic build on the left hand side for offense tree, just taking all the damage into Warmaster. And then we're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling all the way down to the rares there they are so Norhorn, uh two pieces of crit damage and then uh one piece of speed got crit damage on the gloves i did ascend them <laughs> you don't need to do that but i just went a little bit overkill uh hp on the chest for survivability um level five boots because of the speed because he needs to be very very slow and it's hard because when you're end game you know you just keep like the best gear with like great speed rolls. So actually needed some rubbish um, speed boots to help keep his speed down. Defense on the ring, crit damage again on the amulet, and then a five star banner. And you know, this it probably be better if it was defense. The only reason is accuracy is that, you know, it's a five star banner. And again, it was just trying to keep his speed down. So total stats, we've got 51K HP. 2.3k defense that is enough to survive the first hit 184 speed and then 335 crit damage to be fair as long as your crit damage is above the cold hearts you'll be fine um i think the max you should go for a um, for a cold heart is like 275 so 280 and above for your uh, null horn is more than enough i guess you should probably try and get 221 well yeah 200 and above accuracy just for secret rooms and stuff because he does uh, have a provoke. Uh, Masteries, I literally just wanted a bit of accuracy and I wanted that cr extra crit damage as well. That's all he needs. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, I'd say don't take any blessings on him. Just you don't want it to mess with the speed tuning. So, cold heart number one, um, two pieces of speed and one perception. That is because, you know, 251, that's quite a lot of speed. So it just makes sense to me. Of course, we want crit rate. We want crit damage in the sub rolls. Uh, we've got crit damage on the gloves and HP on the chest for survivability and then speed on the boots. HP on the ring, crit damage on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner. Again, this is, I think this is a very old banner on, on Cold Heart. Obviously, I've had them for like five years now. Um, but yeah, 400, no, sorry, 45k HP, um, 249 speed, 70% crit rate. Cold Heart does not need to be crit capped because Cold Seeker has um, a built in 30% crit rate, got 300 crit damage, and then 311 accuracy. Again, you don't really need, um, like so many bosses now, turn meter doesn't work, so you don't really need it anymore. Uh, Phantom Touch is amazing on Cold Heart. She has a very, very unique build. Um, going in the support tree, taking Sniper. And then the offense tree, we're sort of taking a split for Ruthless Ambush. Just means we can do a little bit more damage on that first hit. Uh, singled out, yeah, all of that good stuff. Just, you know, loads of extra damage. But Cycle Violence is where it's at. You know, if we can try and reduce the cooldown on our... Um, on Heartseeker, it just means we can pop off, do more damage, and then of course you want to take Flawless Execution. Um, I do like to take Stoked Fury, just in case there are debuffs on us, just means we can do a little bit more damage. 
if you want, Blood Shield's pretty good as well. Um, just gives you a little bit more survivability. Cold Heart number two. Um, yeah, we do have Whirlwind of Death. Not a big fan of that. Just that if you do get kills, it can mess up with speed tuning. Um, so definitely use the other the other masteries instead of this one. Again, pretty much the same build. Uh, we'll just look at the total stats instead. 44k HP, 251 speed, 88% crit rate, 245 crit damage. So actually, I was wrong, guys. 245 crit damage is more than enough. So you can definitely drop uh, the requirements if you want. So Paragon. So Paragon, we've got him in two pieces of mortal and then two broken pieces. Again, it's just it's hard to get those low speeds. And we've got crit damage on the gloves, uh, defense on the chest, and speed on the boots. I don't know why he's in crit damage, to be honest. It doesn't really matter. Um, you probably should go with like HP or defense, but um, you know, it's just again, it's all about speed tuning. And then we've got resistance on the banner. So actually, you know, back in the day, people used to do that high resistance build on Paragon for that Solar Man defense. Um, I'll probably say that resistance is probably a, a useful stat to have on him. But yeah, just make him tanky, survivable. Um, yeah, so we got 45k HP, 2.9k defense, 176 um, speed. So he is crit capped and we do have 248 crit damage. I guess every little bit of damage helps. Um, and then 274 uh, resistance. He's not known for being a big hitter though, to be fair. Uh, definitely want him fully booked out, especially for his A2. Make sure that we're always placing that unkillable buff. And then masteries, he doesn't actually need them. Do not worry about masteries. Uh, do you know what? I was thinking about the crit damage. It might be... I was going to make him the tank on the team. So that's why he's got so much crit damage. That that makes sense. Um, but yeah, he again, he doesn't need masteries. Um, you know, save save your energy uh for another for another champion. Well, that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. I hope this helps some of you out. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe, and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.